Ugh, my head is pounding. Wait a minute, this place isn't my home. More like Jeffrey Dahmer's apartment. Welcome to Los Santos? This has got to be some bizarre dream. I just gotta snap out of it. Ah, why do I look like this? If you're reading this, we switched bodies. In order to switch back, you must complete these errands for me. I do have a video to release, but I can multitask and check the boxes. Hey, hey, hey! Welcome to my channel, everyone. I'm the Global Chair. <laughs> Hopefully no one saw that. Today I will be delving into your Little Nightmares 3 theories alongside sharing my latest discoveries from the Sounds of Nightmares podcast. Before we begin, subscribe, like the video, and enjoy the show. Your first theory was that the room with the microphone was the room from the maw. It's possible if they were keeping tabs on the children in files. Your next theory was that Six is going to be the antagonist of the third game. I can see this happening as she has the Lady of the Maw's powers now. Maybe Alone and Lo will fight her with the Lady's powers. This vehicle works great. Even without abilities, she would still potentially be the antagonist. Because at the end of the day, she'll save herself. A number of you defend her in the comments saying she saved Mono. She was controlled by Shadow Six, or the Thin Man made her this way. Look, I love Six. However, when I see her in these games, I see a child who snapped from her surroundings, from acting out of fear to being numb to it all. Let's recall when Six and Mono burned the doctor in the furnace. While Mono was planning a way out, we see Six warming her hands over the fire, the same fire that currently burns the doctor's corpse. Little Nightmares 3 is a standalone sequel. So if Six really was behind the mirror, she and our protagonists would not be good friends. Speaking of friends, we got a griefer right here. Ugh. If I'm going down, I'm taking you with me. Some of you also mentioned never seeing Six leave the Maw, indicating her return. Two of you even pointed out that a YouTuber pieced up broken mirror fragments in a Little Nightmares 3 poster, which showed Six proving her return and connection to the mirrors. Some of you hope that Mono returns as well. Unless Little Nightmares 3's plot involves the signal tower, I feel it being unlikely we'll see him. Some of you had a theory that each kid was destined to become one of the monsters when they grow up. The lollipop boy being the barber, the cupid kid looking very similar to the monster baby in Little Nightmares 3. If that theory is correct, then Six would definitely be the candidate to become the next lady after killing the last one. Shh. You saw nothing. If that theory was true, that also means Alone and Low have a dark fate ahead of them. Another one of your theories was that Alone could be a Hawkins test subject if she had supernatural powers like Mono. True. Give me a moment. Hello there. You ever think that something's- Ron, now's not the time. You guys also had another interesting theory that Little Nightmares 3 was a prequel to 1 and a sequel to 2. Lo and Alone could possibly follow Six to the Maw and stop her. That could explain this image that looks like it's from the Maw. On the other hand, some of you mentioned that place was called the Factory. Your next theory was that Lo could be one of the kids from the sixth comic in Little Nightmares 2, and whoever grabbed the kids was the baby. Perhaps the doctor and teacher may have been involved or the baby is more than just a signal light. Another theory you guys had was the game being about waste as it takes place in a wasteland. Meanwhile, the first game was about hunger and the second was about loneliness. Stop the car. What did I do? You're under arrest for existing. Eh? I evaded the cop, so let's move on to our next theory. The necropolis is a ruined version of Pale City. I honestly wish it was. Apart from your theories, you recommended that I listen to the podcast. After listening to it, I got more theories for you. 
Noon visits Otto at a psychiatric institute to recover from her recurring nightmare disorders. They discuss a painting in the room called the Zahir's Gaze, which references a book called the Zahir, with an otherworldly power to give its victim obsession. A common theme in the games. In Little Nightmares 1, the guests were obsessed with food, the lady was obsessed with her looks, Six was obsessed with hunger, the viewer with their TVs, and the thin man obsessed with keeping Six from Mono. But who gave Gave them this obsession. A number of these children have seen a common figure, the Zahir itself, the ferryman. Noon and Otto's little Cece have had encounters with them in dreams. Is the Nowhere in Little Nightmares 3 a separate reality children access via nightmares before he takes them there? Otto discussed mutual dreaming, sharing the experience with others. These other children are sharing these nightmares with Noon in the real world. Noon describes her dreams at what sounds like the Maw with the lady, masks, shadow children, and prisoners with chains around their legs. We know she's not the only one who's been there. If the Zahir applies to everyone, a question came to my mind. What is Otto's Zahir? The way he builds rapport with Noon is endearing, but it's also obsessive and disturbing. You're turning me on! He gives Noon candy while saying sweets for my sweet. It's very odd that he would give sugar to a child with nightmares considering it stimulates their imagination and gives them bad dreams. He seems to be purposely putting Noon in hypnotic inductions to go through nightmares, maybe to uncover the mystery of his missing Cece, his daughter. This theory may be a bit far-fetched, but CC sounds very close to Cease, which in French means six. And there's six episodes of this podcast. Coincidence much? The characters that fell victim to obsession eventually became monsters, so will Otto become one. In episode 3, Noon describes an abandoned mall in a place that feels like the signal tower in Pale City. It tempted her to stay with dolls, her favorite movie, dresses, and jewelry like an enchanted red pendant. It appears that Six was not the only girl who has been to Pale City, or stepped into the signal tower. Later, Noon discovers the voice on the PA begging her to stay in a projection room, with a deformed eye, brainy substances, muscles, and tubes. Sounds familiar. Maybe in Little Nightmares 3, our questions about that lumpy brain matter will be answered. The fairy man also quoted to her, The far away drifts near, as if it's a ritual to transport her into another reality. In episode 4, it appears we have two antagonists. Noon describes her nightmares at a carnival with her new friends performing in front of the guests. Little did she know, the man in charge of the carnival was an immense threat. A man in a purple suit with no eyes. On his lap lies a dummy with eyes. So that's where his eyes went. Then who's the second antagonist? I think it's going to be Otto somehow. He's obsessed with finding his daughter and crossing into the nowhere. He believes the ferryman had a role in her disappearance. Strangely, he also sees Cece in Noon and swears to protect her. If every victim with obsession and little nightmares becomes a monster, would that also apply to this man? What if he succeeded at entering the nowhere? A place where usually children go to. Would he still be human or would he become one of those monsters in Little Nightmares 3? I guess we'll find out when the game is out. What we do know is he was not as nice as he was at the beginning of the podcast. That is all for today. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like, subscribe for more content like this, and comment your opinions on the game or more of your theories for Little Nightmares 3. Thank you for watching, and that's all. Oh, come on. Oh.